It's Saturday morning in Nashville, Tennessee. That means Music City Wrestling is on the air. Bert Friend is here along with Paul Adams. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new North American heavyweight champion, Terry Golden, who questionably defeated the Colorado Kid Thanksgiving night at the Nashville Fairgrounds Arena. Also, ladies and gentlemen, on today's show, a brand new tag team, Bad, Black, and Beautiful. Wolfie D will be here, Flash Franigan. But what I'm excited, Paul, to tell the fans here in Nashville about, if you did not make it out to the Nashville Fairgrounds, if you were not one of the almost 800 people in attendance that night, the Tennessee Homecoming video was released this morning. And if you want to order it, the address is there on the screen, 998 Elm Hill Pike, and make your checks out to Choice Cuts Video. That's the video company that is releasing this brand new tape, Thanksgiving Homecoming 1997. You'll see it all from the Legends Inductions to the scaffold match, the ladder match, and the big North American title match. Ladies and gentlemen, it's on there. Be one of the first 100 to order the tape. It's only $20. We pay shipping. That's unbelievable. $20. We pay shipping. Make your check or money order right out there to Choice Cuts Video. And ladies and gentlemen, like I said, if you're one of the first 100 to order the brand new Tennessee Homecoming videotape, we will enclose a commemorative program from Thanksgiving night. These were the actual programs that were sold there. Christine Jarrett's pictures on the cover. It's eight pages long. Perfect souvenir to go along with your videotape. Order your video today. Now, big action tonight at the Nashville Fairgrounds. Exactly right, Burt Prentice. Like I said, this week on TV, we got that rematch between J.C. Ice and my boy Terry Golden. The action's going to continue just like Thanksgiving night. We're going back at it. You know, Thursday nights, we warm up around here. We get ready for the weekends in Nashville. And Saturday night's all right for fighting, and that's what we're doing tonight. Seven big matches in Nashville at the Fairgrounds tonight. Starts at 8 o'clock. Don't miss it. Welcome into another edition of MCW Music City Wrestling. Here's Julie Michael St. John along with Paul Adams at ringside. And to kick things off, a newcomer out of Tallahassee, Florida, a Seminole in Tom Street to take on the very popular Wolfie D. And we're starting off here strong this week. Michael, we got one of the top players here in the MCW and Wolfie D. And we're starting off strong in the crowds into it. And it's a capacity crowd this week here for MCW. Your referee is Robert Briscoe. This match one fall and right away, Wolfie D going right to work on Mr. Tom Street. Don't know a lot about this newcomer out of the great state of Florida, but he comes in here showing his prowess to the crowd. I mean, he was thumping around the ring like he's some superstar, and Wolfie D right away jumps in the ring and takes control of the match. Look at those pants right there. This is another thing that these referees like Briscoe need to get a hold of around here. Look at that outfit. You know, most people wear uh, wash and wear pants. Look at Wolfie D, it's just wear, 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 and something needs to be done about that as well. I think that's just a sign of the times and the, the trend, the fad, the, uh, the clothing style, if you would, of the young people. And you got to remember that Wolfie D comes out of that outstanding tag team with J.C. Ice as PG-13. They started out at a very young age in professional wrestling as a tag team, but both men have been successful as a tag team, but are now very successful individual single competition wrestlers. That's exactly right. You know, J.C.'s going to be here later in the hour, as you see, Street. Almost getting him over there for a three count, but really all Wolfie needs to do is uh, let go of the hold right there and he'll be all set. But yeah, you're talking about the clothes and a sign of the times and all that in these PG-13s. You know, another sign of the times is uh, metal detectors in schools. That's the kind of stuff that this PG represents. It's, it's stuff like that I'm against. I don't know what's wrong with these kids these days. The only problem that PG-13 or IE Wolfie D would have with a metal detector is the fact that that hubcap may make it go off, but that's about it. These are two of the finest young wrestlers in the sport today. And you see him right there back to a headlock. He's got, you know, he started out a house of fire like we were talking about there with a lot of moves we haven't seen from Wolfie over the last couple of weeks. I think because, I think mainly because Michael, he's been suffering from a lot of nagging injuries and, and new injuries. Uh, more, you know, that have been uh, created more severely week after week after week by Flash Flanagan. And I think he's in there this week. He's a little bit more healthy than we've seen. He's had time to recuperate over the holidays, and he's been taking it right to Tommy Street. I think he's also been a little tentative because he, as much as us, do not know a whole lot about Tommy Street. And there we see Street back out of the way, and Wolfie D takes the punishment in the turnbuckle. Another thing we might be seeing here as far as Wolfie coming out strong this week, stronger than we've seen him in the last couple of weeks, is I think perhaps he thinks that he has settled his feud with Flash 
Flash Flanagan. Maybe he's thinking that he doesn't have to watch his back or worry about getting jumped from behind like he has in the last couple of weeks. And he's focused on his opponent in the ring this week rather than watching his back for uh, premeditated attacks. Fact be known is that Wolfie D was attacked here on television a few weeks back, attacked with a ladder, and the ladder literally scissored on this man. And uh, Wolfie D, as you say, has uh, had some nagging injuries, but the fact of the matter remains that he has taken the measure of Flash Flanagan, and if Flash Flanagan results wrestling to wrestling, Wolfie D will take the measure every time, but the fact is Flash Flanagan does not always wrestle. He likes to come out and just, quite frankly, street brawl at times. Well, and you're talking about those nagging injuries there and the ladder. His neck was aggravated in the first place, and it was uh, even more severely damaged by that ladder incident with Flash Flanagan. It'll be interesting to see what kind of homework our man, Mr. Street, has done if he's going to go after that neck. We see Wolfie coming back right here. He caught him on the top, and that may be trouble for Tommy Street. And Tommy Street locked on that top uh, turnbuckle. Wolfie D going up for that bulldog, and there we go. Whoa, look at that. Ramming his head into the mat, and down goes Street. Let's see if Wolfie D closes it off right here. I think he's calling for the power bomb, Michael. He's setting it up. Our capacity crowd looking forward to this one. The spinning power bomb, there it is. Street goes down. Here comes the cover. One, two, three, victory for Wolfie D. Look out. Look out. And here comes Flanagan again. Flanagan with a chair. And Flanagan just under the ring with a chair. Michael, I was just, I spoke too soon. I'm talking about how he doesn't have to watch his back. Evidently, this still is not over between Wolfie D and Flash Flanagan. It looks like he's putting the chair over his wrist there a lot like he did with the uh, with the ladder on his neck three weeks ago. He's got that chair locked up the rail. Oh my gosh, that is that is a wrist-breaking maneuver. I've seen several wrestlers and we're with just that talk wrist broken in exactly that manner, and I believe that has just occurred in our ring here on MCW. And Flanagan's staying right on him. He's in there, he's mocking him. Now who's this coming down? We got PG, and we got Stephen Dunn in there. JC Ice and Stephen Dunn coming to the rescue. And not a moment too soon, because Wolfie D has been hurt and hurt bad, as his, his wrist was locked into that chair, and Flanagan came off the turnbuckle, and Wolfie D is hurt. We're gonna have to break away, but first let's see if we can get an interview with Flash Flanagan. I cannot believe what I have just witnessed in this ring right now. I cannot believe what you have done. Oh, I, what is this, oh. a match tonight here in Nashville, Tennessee, an I quit match? Are you trying to get a little advantage going into this one? Tonight, Wolfie D, I quit match. Well, I don't think you're gonna be here. Matter of fact, I think your arm's broke. You know, I just sort of snap, crackle, pop, Oh, and it felt good. Wolfie D, I told you, you were going to go to the hospital one way or the other. Now, you tell me how it feels. Tonight, I quit match. I don't think you're going to show up. Burt Prentice, find me another opponent. I don't care who it is. As a matter of fact, it, it don't matter. I want anybody. First there was Doug Gilbert. He's hurt. Wolfie D, he's hurt. It doesn't matter to me anymore. You see, when I get screwed over by you or anybody out there, Somebody's gonna pay. Now, as far as Thanksgiving night goes, Jason Jarrett screwed me over. I'll take him, I'll it don't matter. I don't, let's find me an opponent for tonight. Anybody, you got the guts. Oh, that's the words of Flash Flanagan, and an I quit match tonight at the Fairgrounds Arena. Him against Wolfie D. Wolfie D will be here. Flash Flanagan has a debt to be paid. And we're ready for action now as the Colorado Kid takes on Jason Lee. Colorado Kid has had his differences recently with Terry Golden to the point of Terry Golden winning the North American Championship belt back on Thanksgiving. Absolutely, Michael, on Thanksgiving night. You know, they say people get stressed out around the holidays, but what's going on around here is ridiculous. We just had Flash Flanagan coming out, him and Wolfie Deer going at it again. Obviously, nothing's been settled, and Terry Golden, that's absolutely right. He's got two belts now. He's wearing all the gold in that Colorado kid there. He looks like he's about 10 pounds lighter, and I don't mean that he went on a diet, although it does look like he got hit by a <laughs> by a train wreck. Well, I'll say this much, that the Colorado kid on Thanksgiving night, having seen the tape, was robbed of his belt. Did you see what happened, Michael? He was hit by a locomotive on Thanksgiving night. He got a broken nose and a black eye and a big bruise to his shoulder, all courtesy of the Golden Boy. Who wears the gold? All the gold here in MCW, Terry Golden. And speaking of golden, the golden locks of Jason Lee in the match right now with the Colorado Kid. As the Colorado Kid, I'm sure, would like to make a strong showing on television today to get his name placed right back there and ensure his position as the number one challenger to the crown. 
both as the North American champion and the Southern Heavyweight champion. Never mind status around here, Michael. Status has nothing to do with it. Do you know how few times that this guy's even been beat for a one, two, three count in his career? What he needs to regain is his confidence. Because right now, I don't think he's thinking that he's the superstar that everyone's made him out to be, that he thinks he is after Terry Golden proved it to him this past Thanksgiving. And we'll see in this match how he fares with young Jason Lee. Referee Gene Johnson warning Lee about going into the hair. And this is one thing this man has been known to do. We're gonna try to check with the dressing room authorities and find out the condition of Wolfie D and that wrist as he left the ring, not only in pain, but just looking at the wrist. I'll tell you, I don't, I'm not a doctor, but I have seen enough broken wrist in my day to know if that wrist is not broken, then it is severely dislocated. And I don't know if you can dislocate a wrist like that. Well, I don't know about any of that, but like I said, he's been played with, Wolfie D has been played with injuries over the last couple of weeks, and this may just be the latest. Those two are going at it. But like I said, I want you to watch here. Watch how, notice how slow the Colorado seems to be starting out this week. I think he's lacking a bit of the confidence and fire that he usually has. Nothing slow about this maneuver. The Colorado kid going for the power slam. Down goes Jason Lee. Cover, count of one, but that was it. But if you notice, Mike, he's not sitting there playing to the crowd, playing up to all the girls and the teeny boppers like he normally does trying to get the crowd all pumped up. He's all business in there. He knows, he knows that an Achilles heel was pointed out Thanksgiving night by Terry Golden. He knows Terry Golden's got him on the run, and I think he's worried. I don't think it was much of an Achilles heel. I think it was just an outright situation where the man got cheated out of his championship belt. I don't see how you see that. What I will say is I think that the presence of Princess D definitely made a difference because when you have somebody like that in your corner, you want to talk about Golden Locks, you just feel like you are on cloud nine, Michael. Well, Princess D, i.e. Debbie Combs, has been around the block once or twice, and I'm sure is looking much, very greatly forward to putting the gold in the corner of Terry Golden so she can just yank it out from him just like she has done so many other times in her career. She does not need to play games like that, Michael. You know, she was out here with me last week talking about what's on her Christmas wish list and what she wants to receive this holiday season. She's already got more gold in her stable and all these men out here keep sending her stuff all week. You know, what are you gonna send her? Have you decided yet? I think that was the most ridiculous thing I have ever seen on television, the fact that Princess D expects, expects any fan and in their right mind on MCW Wrestling or watching MCW Wrestling to send her anything beside a little uh, note to tell her that her behavior absolutely stinks. I don't know about any of that, Michael. It wasn't her idea in the first place. You know, all these guys send email and cards and letters and stuff. She's just coming out and let them know, you know, if they're gonna send stuff, they might as well some send something that she's gonna enjoy. Well, I think a message that Colorado Kid would like to send to Princess D and Terry Golden is by means of a victory in the ring, regaining the gold belt that he so, he, he just lost from the fact that he was cheated out of it. That's all I can say. But are you noticing, Michael, that unlike last week when Kid was out here, you know, you and I talked about, we pontificated upon the fact that Kid is go, go, go in the ring when he was out here with Killer Kyle last week on TV here in MCW. Are you noticing a little bit slower style, a little bit more methodical, a little bit more laid back, maybe a little bit nervous this week on MCW, Michael? Are you noticing that? I don't think it has anything <laughs> I to am. do with nerve. I do think that the man is pacing himself, and I think he may be reserving that energy for a little rematch with Terry Golden in Nashville, Tennessee. You know what? I'm not so sure he deserves a rematch. I think now that Terry Golden has both belts, the Southern Heavyweight title and the North American Heavyweight Championship, I think he needs to go ahead and find, Burt Prentice needs to find some top competition around here, not somebody like the Colorado Kid, a punk that has been proven to be a loser Thanksgiving night. He needs to find some top quality opponents for Terry Golden now. Right now, the Colorado Kid being posted in the corner by Jason Lee as he just rammed the side of the knee into the ring post. And Jason Lee climbing back into the ring and quickly Colorado Kid regaining his composure. And Jason Lee working over that left leg now, taking an inside inverted standing toe hold. And you can hear these blithering idiots here in the crowd. They're sitting there chanting, go kid, go, go kid, go. They have been brainwashed, Michael. Literally brainwashed by this Burt Prentice. You know, you're new around here. I understand that you're not too up on what things are like around here. But this Burt Prentice has poisoned their minds. And I think right now, now that he's no longer got the belt and Terry Golden has the belt, he needs to feed him opponent after opponent, sacrificial lamb after sacrificial lamb, and let Terry Golden prove to all these people that they should be chanting, go Terry, go, go Terry, go. Well, Paul Adams, in your previous life as a manager, you have been known to hand pick opponents. And I will say this about the promotion of MCW, nobody is being hand picked. Colorado Kid taking on all comers anytime, any place, anywhere. 
That was evident by the fact that he had to meet Terry Golden and Miss Princess D on Thanksgiving night right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Let me explain something to you, Michael. You know, Nashville, Tennessee, they are in the bidding for the year 2000 for the National Democratic Convention. It's all politics around here, and this would be the perfect city for it because FCW is all politics there, and Lee misses the moonsault. Well, that was nothing political about that moonsault other than the fact that he caught Matt. There's a drop kick by Kidd. He rolls him up for the cover, and he gets the three count. Methodically victorious, the Colorado Kid. Another impressive victory by the Colorado Kid. Unbelievable. I tell you what, now Colorado, tonight in Nashville, you're taking on Billy Joe Travis because Terry Golden simply will not give you a rematch. As I said earlier in the show, he lost the North American title by very questionable circumstances. Questionable. Yeah, questionable. I won. I got the one, two, three. And the referee raised the wrong man's hand. Everybody there that seen it. We was packed to the ceiling, and everybody knows that I walked out of there. I actually have the footage from that, and we're going to show that next week. I want them, everybody to see that. Just a second, son. You're a prima donna, and you know you are. Right here is what means something in this business, MCW wrestling. You want a title shot? Work your way up the rank, son, because when I beat you, you were somebody right now, you're nobody. I carry all the belts, and who I think, with me and Princess D, we've been looking through the tapes. You know who I want to shot with this tonight, Saturday night tonight? I picked my opponent. I want Blade Boudreaux, the Louisiana sensation. That's who deserves a title shot. You beat somebody. He's not even rated. Wait a minute. You, you can't pick your opponent. You can't pick your opponent's number one, one first off. You know everybody here knows that I beat you for the one, two, three. I took both of them belts. Yeah, and the referee was groggy and he raised your hand, but everybody knows. Everybody here that was there that night, eh? oh, y'all seen me. I beat you, and all these belts right here should be with me. And I'm not a crybaby. I'm not coming out here crying. All I'm telling you is quit being a chicken and give me that rematch. That's all I'm saying. Well, if he beats oh, Travis oh, tonight, will you give him a match? If he beats Travis tonight, I'm impressed. If you're not a crybaby, quit your pick money moaning, work your way back up the rakes, and be a man, son, because right now you're not a man, and I'm the man because I got all the gold and the tin in the town, because I'm the man, and Babe Rougeau gets the shot tonight, and you're nobody. Beat somebody if you want to beat somebody, son. Blade Rougeau is not even rated. Now, this is I tell you what, man, if that ain't a coward way out, I don't know. I tell you what, Terry Golden, you say that I've got to start from my way and go to the top. Let me tell you something, pal. Colorado kid's coming back for his belt, and hell's coming with him. Whoa! Colorado Billy Joe Travis, I don't think I'd like to beat you tonight. Colorado kid, Billy Joe Travis, Colorado's going back after the belt. I've never seen him like that before. On Christmas night, December 25th, Music City Wrestling will present another holiday wrestling spectacular at the Nashville Fairgrounds. Don't miss Christmas chaos. Christmas night, December 25th, only at the Nashville Fairgrounds Sports Arena. Yours truly, Michael St. John, along with Paul Adams. And in the ring right now, Stephen Dunn in Trailer Park Trash. And Stephen Dunn has been a man on a mission, and his mission is to try to negate the obnoxious efforts of Rex King. Rex King has literally been able, has been able to catch the attention of Stephen Dunn to the fact that Rex King is trying to snuff out the career of the one Stephen Dunn. Well, I think it's very interesting how things fall into place, Michael, sometimes, like pieces into a puzzle. Because right now, I've taken you to school this week, the way things are uh, going around here. You know, I was just talking about politics before we left for the break in that interview there. And this is a guy who knows how to play his politics perfectly, Stephen Dunn. And that's one of the reasons Rex King is out here to expose this man as a fraud. He kisses up to the promoters. He takes the right person out for drinks, yada, 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 and tries to get the top matches around here. It's not through skill. It's not through talent. It's through kissing up. And that's one of the reasons King's out here to prove that his ex-partner is nothing but a, 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 a complete fabrication of what he claims to be. I don't see how you can say that, Mr. Adams, and the fact that Stephen Dunn's face has been covered up I know on two occasions with a plastic bag. I mean, is Rex King a member of Heaven's Gate, for goodness sake? He is trying to snuff out his ex-partner. He has taken it to a level 
that I have not seen in professional wrestling in that he wants to end it for Stephen Dunn. I mean, he's on the edge. He is on the, if you would, edge of the envelope of criminal activity in and out of the ring in his attacks on Stephen Dunn. Oh, you haven't seen things like that before. Well, you need to get out more, Michael, and stop playing around in these uh, adult entertainment establishments and come see the action here at the uh, fairgrounds every week. I don't know, you know, they're going back at it tonight just like everybody else around here won't let up. Rex King and Steve Dunn are going at it tonight. Somebody better bring a body bag because I think Rex King is here and he's willing to take out Stephen Dunn. Tonight's gonna be the final time we see Stephen Dunn. Well, let's watch your language when you talk about body bags. Hey, there's an I quit match tonight in Nashville, Tennessee. Flash Flanagan against Wolfie D. Wolfie D has an injury. We're checking on the nature of that injury even as we speak but I can assure you one thing, that if Wolfie D has a breath left in his body, he will be here, he will be in that match tonight with Flash Flanagan, the main event at the Nashville Fairgrounds Arena. I was just gonna say, you know, I don't know if he's gonna be here in action tonight. He'll after be that, here. Well, after that wrist injury, who knows, but we can be sure that he's not gonna be getting a lot of action after the show with that wrist injury, can't we? <laughs> Big part of action tonight at the Nashville Fairgrounds Arena included Billy Joe Travis will take on the Colorado Kid. Uh, Terry Golden, the quote unquote champion of MCW, he's laying claim to that title too because he's got the North American belt and the Southern Heavyweight belt around his waist. He is hand picking his opponents. This is something that I think is absolutely ludicrous. Blade Boudreaux is the man he will take on tonight at the Fairgrounds Arena. The grudge match, as you alluded to, Rex King and Stephen Dunn. And allow me to allude to something else here, Michael. I don't know about well, Blade Boudreaux. He's here thinking his opponents want, 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 Michael. I was out here just before, you know, I mentioned that Golden needs some top competition. I guess since the promoters around here can't do it and they're not willing to hand pick opponents for uh, Terry Golden like they did the Colorado Kids, set up the smorgasbord like they did for Colorado. Golden has to go out and pick his own opponents. He cannot possibly find a tougher man. Blade Boudreaux might quite possibly be the toughest man walking the face of the earth. There you see Trailer Park Trash going in after Stephen Dunn after hijacking him in the corner. Has that reverse chin lock on him and Dunn is down on the map. You know, you, you keep referring to things, but I can, uh, I can detect a little air of uh, perhaps disappointment in your voice, Mr. Adams, and that maybe you're not managing one of these champions in MCW these days? I'm quite happy to sit back here and explain things to you, Michael, and set you straight, and set these people at home straight that watch MCW every week. I'm just trying to tell you, did you hear what I said? Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm kind of worried about Terry Golden tonight. He has to take on Blade Boudreaux. Do you know what he can do to Terry Golden? That man is an animal. Right now in the ring, Stephen Dunn taking over on Trailer Park Trash, but just as I say that, Trash rakes at the eyes of Dunn to take the advantage right back. Oh, trust me, if you're some pretty boy like Stephen Dunn, Trailer Park Trash, TPT ain't the man to get in there with, Michael, because this guy, he don't care. He ain't afraid to get dirt under his nails. He'll go at you full steam ahead like he's doing right now, and you see he's gained a command and control of this match over Stephen Dunn. Don't shortchange Mr. Dunn. I have seen Stephen Dunn in matches with far better competition than Trailer Park Trash completely dominate the match. But right now, Trailer Park Trash has just lucked into a string of uh, low blows, if you would, to take the advantage. Don't count Stephen Dunn out of this or any other match, especially when it comes to his ex-partner, Rex King. Dunn has a score to settle, and it will come at the expense of Rex King, I can assure you. You know, week after week, Michael, I mentioned to you that I'm quite impressed with Trailer Park Trash, that I think he's extremely underrated around here, and you never even respond. You don't make one comment like you might agree with me. You don't think that this guy could last week after week here in Music City Wrestling, and he's been in some of the top matches without being a tough guy, and quite possibly a contender, and quite possibly end up the victor in this match? Are I, you nuts? I think this man, I'll be honest with you, Paul Adams, I think Trailer Park Trash is the next Bulldog Reigns. Now what is that supposed to mean? Nice forearm by Dunn. He's got the cover. He's got the victory. Steve Dunn making easy work of Trailer Park Trash in the end. In recent events here at MCW, this man having altercations, problems with Rex King to the point, Stephen Dunn, that he's trying to put you out of wrestling using a plastic bag over your face in the ring. You know what, Michael? There's an old saying in this business. It's in life in general. People in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Well, let me tell you something, Rex King. For a long time, we were well done. For a long time, we were simply divine. And when we did all that, I pulled the same kind of crap you're pulling, son. So it ain't nothing new to me. 
Well, let me tell you something. Come Saturday night, I got the match sign I want. You know, ever since I've been to Music City Wrestling, they've had all kinds of matches. They've had people on scaffolds, on ladders, chain matches. Well, that's all fine and dandy, because Saturday night, it ain't no gimmicks. It's just you and me. But the only stipulation is no disqualification. And what that means, Rex King, is just this. That means we can use anything in this building. That means you can bring boards, you can bring chains, powder, plastic bags, anything you want. But the catch to that is, so can I. So let me tell you something. I'm gonna make an apology right now to all these fans at Music City Wrestling. Because for the last two years, for the last two years, I've tried to follow the rules. I've tried to be a champion for these people and do what they want. And you've done a good job of but Saturday night, I'm apologizing right now, Michael. It goes out the window. It's real personal, Rex. And when all the board break is done and all the chains have been used and the plastic bags have been pulled out, there's only going to be one man standing tall in Music City Wrestling. I make my home right here in Hendersonville, Tennessee. And Saturday night, when all the dust clears and when we're beaten and bloody, there's only going to be one man standing, one man left in Music City Wrestling, and that's Stephen Dunn. And that man tonight will get his shot at Rex King. All the stakes are even. We'll be back with more on MCW right after this. Bad, black, and beautiful taking on Bobby Bronze and one half of the MCW Tag Team Champions, the Thrill Billy and Paul Adams. I know you've scouted this team. You've seen some tape on Bad, Black, and Beautiful. They've got a new face in their corner, though, as we see today, and that is uh, they have been introduced by their manager, Derek King. Triple B, Bad, Black, and Beautiful, along with Derek King. That's a proper tag team, not like this mongrel combination of the scuffling hillbilly, the thrillbilly, and this Bobby Bronze, despite the fact that he's got the advantage right there. We'll see how long that lasts when you got a mind like Derek King on the outside. But like I said, they're a proper tag team. You know, you see Terry Golden out here facing all the top competition defending his belt. Why aren't the hillbilly out here with his real partner, Shane Eden, defending the tag team belts? You know why? Because like Colorado Kid, they're ducking real challenges, unlike my man, Terry Golden. Right now, the tag made from bronze to the Thrill Billy, one half of the tag team champions. He's gonna wrap that arm and Thrill Billy off of that second rope and pounds it down with that double ax handle. He takes that arm bar, short arm bar right now, and he grasps it onto Sean Powers, one half of Bad, Black, and Beautiful. You were alluding to Derek King at ringside being one of your favorite people. I notice you two are about the same size and stature. Is uh, Derek King perhaps uh, living out your fantasy of maybe managing a team like Bad, Black, and Beautiful? I'll just say this, Michael, like you said, I sit back here and now I analyze things for you. I pontificate, I ponder, I wonder, I analyze. You know, I don't wanna be down there in the hot seat right now with all these different issues going on. Do you think I wanna be involved in the mayhem that's gonna ensue tonight at the fairgrounds? Uh-uh, I'll come and I'll watch it and I'll love watching people get their brains beat out and maybe I'll throw my uh, two cents in, who knows? But no, Derek King's down there. He can handle it. As far as us being the same sizes, yes, once in a while we do trade clothes. He has a nice corduroy jacket that, that, uh, that, that I, I quite, I quite, admire him for having. I, I want to borrow it one of these days, Michael. Maybe you want to take a look at his wardrobe too. You see that's leather right there. Not pleather like you wear, that's leather. Right now in the ring, Bad, Black and Beautiful beginning to take over on Bobby Bronze, a leading candidate for Rookie of the Year. Tag is made. We'll see Billy Simmons for the first time legally in the match. And now we see the technique of BBB beginning to uh, take hold here. We were told that they go stay right on their opponents and go right after the pin. And indeed, that's what we see happen. Uh, Billy Simmons a little disappointed that the count from referee Robert Briscoe was not quicker. Backs his opponent into the corner and starts pounding away with right hand. Well, you want to talk about this Briscoe referee. We need to get a close-up of his face there. His eyes are crossed. I don't know what kind of dirty deeds he was doing. Maybe somebody slapped him on the back, but I don't trust this guy to keep this one in control whatsoever. Billy Simmons coming right at you. Back body drop by Bobby Bronze. And Simmons is down and is reeling. Bronze taking the fight right to the big man. Standing hip toss and a nice one. And Bobby see, Bronze is in great shape, Paul. And see, but that's exactly what I'm talking about right there. I think Bronze took the tights on the course. This referee's got one eye on the hillbilly and one eye on uh, Sean Powers over in the corner for Bad, Black, and Beautiful. He don't know what's going on in there. And the Thrillbilly tags in and continues the assault 
on Billy Simmons. Whips him into the ropes. Misses him with the clothesline. Here comes Simmons. Ooh, he got him in the midsection. There's an uppercut. And now Billy Simmons taking over on the big uh, country boy, makes the tag, and we'll see Sean Powers back in the ring. Michael, I just want to let you know that you know you can editorialize out here. I know they announce him as the Thrill Billy, but I don't see anything thrilling about him, and neither could you. Let's call him what he is. Let's call him a hill, Billy, because we are calling bad, black, and beautiful what they are, bad, black, and beautiful. Free. And Feel free to speak your mind out here, Michael. Go right ahead. Standing suplex that time. Powers goes for the cover, goes to hook the leg. But quickly, the Thrill Billy kicks out. He is one half of the MCW Tag Team Champions, and I think he should be accredited the uh, account of being such. You can just put so much perfume on a pig, Michael. It's still a pig. That's, that's pure swine right there, whether you want to put some bedazzled corduroys on them or whatever, it's the same old deal. That's a scuffle in hillbilly right there. That's not a wrestling technician, and there's nothing thrilling about him. Well, I can assure you, being uh, a historian of wrestling in the past here in Nashville, Tennessee, the scuffling hillbillies were champions many times back uh, a, a couple of decades back, and if this young man has any bloodlines uh, to that, a successful tag team, he too will be a successful wrestler in the ring. Let me tell you something about bloodlines. This scuffling through, he's from Missouri. He's been married three times and he's still got the same in-laws, Michael. This guy ain't worth nothing. Flying body press goes for the cover, but he kicked out after two as Sean Powers was able to bolt out of that. He went with the left hand over in the corner for Bobby Bronze. Now the referee trying to get Bronze out of the ring. And in the meantime, bad, black, and beautiful go to work double teaming the throw Billy in their corner. Yeah, they're going to town. They're going to work. That's exactly right. You know, you talk about this Bronze being a possible rookie of the year. He's a, he's a top candidate in all this stuff. I see him make more rookie mistakes than anybody around here, just like being suckered in by Powers right there just a minute ago. And now you see what's happening to his partner. Bad, black, and beautiful. They are holding the throw Billy at bay. In fact, they have got him uh, noosed up, if you would, in the corner. I heard that term the other day. I thought maybe you would like to hear that new little uh, modern day terminology for a chokehold. What are you down with OPP too, Michael? Give me a break. Check out Chris Rock, I mean Derek King there in the corner. He's instructed his men. He's got them fine tuned for their debut here. And they are being impressive, whether you want to agree with me or not. Inside standing toe hole that time are uh, taken over by Billy Simmons. One half of Black, Black and Beautiful. Tag made, nope, he just slapped his hands together. And now Sean Powers comes in and he takes over on the throw, Billy, and he's just choking him. There you got a good shot of it on TV. And what we didn't see there on camera was a referee kind of admonishing Bad, Black and Beautiful. I don't know what for, you know, you said they just slapped hands, they didn't really tag. Why go through the formalities? They were right there in the corner. Now look at the hill, Billy. I think he hooked the tights there too. We need to get Briscoe after these guys. There you see the power and the force of the thrill, Billy. He needs to make the tag and indeed he does. Here comes Bobby Bronze leaping into the ring. And now Bronze is gonna go to work on both BBB competitors. One for Simmons. He had one for Powers there. Here comes Simmons. Oh, low blow downstairs. I was going to say he's in there with both of Bad, Black, and Beautiful, and there's no sign of his partner, so he better watch out. Bad, Black, and Beautiful, look at that. Double whip. Down goes Bronze. Here's the cover by Powers. One, two, three, and Bad, Black, and Beautiful get the victory. Oh. J.C. Ice against Terry Golden. Terry Golden, both the Southern and North American heavyweight champion, J.C. Ice, a tremendous wrestler, being born and raised right here in Nashville, Tennessee, from great bloodlines, that of superstar Bill Dundee. And now, uh-oh, Terry Golden grabbing that upcap of J.C. Ice. That will only make Ice a little more infuriated than he already is. Michael St. John in ringside with Paul Adams. And Paul, this is quite a match main event time today here on MCW. Absolutely, it's a rematch. In fact, Michael, the third time that these two have met up here in Music City Wrestling. We saw the second match last week here on MCW. And Terry Golden is 2-0, whereas uh, you can go vice versa there and you get the record of J.C. Ice. He's 0-2, uh, Michael. Well, I believe, if I am not mistaken, that uh, that young lady, if you would. That's right. You refer to her properly. Young lady. That young flower right there. That vibrant young woman right there is in the corner of Terry Golden. And look at what J.C. Ice has, an old filthy, dirty hubcap. But, you know, this Golden's a Southern heavyweight champion now and the new North American heavyweight champion. But this is a non-title bout, Michael. I just want you to know that. The title is not at stake because, quite honestly, I don't know. He's defending against Blade Boudreaux tonight, who's really, really tough. 
He's one of the toughest uh, you know what's on the face of the earth, and I'm not see Jay, I'm not sure JC Ice is really in his uh, in the class of Blade Boudreau. True that Golden is defending the belt tonight at the fairgrounds against Blade Boudreau, but that is a hand-picked opponent by Mr. Golden and Miss Princess D. Other matches on the card tonight in Nashville. Billy Joe Travis will take on the Colorado Kid. Stephen Dunn against Rex King, a grudge match with no disqualification. King has tried to choke, not only choke the man, he's tried to smother the man to death on a couple of occasions tonight. The stakes are even. Stephen Dunn will bring anything he needs to bring into the ring, and I'm sure Rex King will come loaded for bear. That should be quite a match tonight at the fairground. Well, I heard you out here earlier with Stephen Dunn, and he's out here wah, 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 yapping it up and all that. This Stephen Dunn, you know, he's kind of like an etcher sketch quite frankly, Michael. You know, you shake his head a little bit hard, and he forgets everything. I think he may have forgotten what happened to him on Thanksgiving night with that plastic bag and this past Saturday night at the fairgrounds, and I think King is going to do a number on him. I was talking about body bags. Uh-huh. That's what I'm screaming tonight at the fairgrounds in Nashville. Other matches include Shane Eaton, a very popular young wrestler, and half of the tag team champions here in MCW. He will take on Frenchy Riviera, plus J.C. Ice will be in action tonight at the fairgrounds. Now, you see, J.C. had to go to the top rope there even to get any from just a normal lockup and a test of strength. I'm telling you, this JC is a shrimp, like I told you before. He's so short, he can work as a teller in a piggy bank. JC Ice, right now, a very even match between he and Terry Golden, our main event on MCW. By the way, if you'd like to keep up with the action on MCW during the week, you can lock into our website, mcwrestling.com. That's mcwrestling, one word, dot com. Catch up on all the happenings right here in MCW. And you see right there that clumsy JC Ice, I think, I think what happened, like I was talking about his height disadvantage there, he hit the ropes and that top rope might be a little bit high. I think he kind of snagged his shoulder under that and he kind of snagged his ankle uh, above the top, uh, I mean the bottom rope there. But you know what I'm saying? You're you looking see... at the snag right there. There's the reason that it happened. Don't you call her a hag, Michael. She was over there minding her own business in the corner trying to keep that guy down in his seat and JC the clumsy clutch trip. And you see Golden, I think he's gonna, Almost a three count. Well, out of instinct, J.C. Ice raising that left arm and causing that shoulder to come out of the, off the mat. See, this is why Golden has to hand pick his opponents. You don't want somebody undersized and underprivileged in there like J.C. Ice, who's gonna trip on a simple move like an Irish whip into the ropes and nearly get himself uh, found totally out of the bout at this point. Paul Adams, you should know better than anybody. It's not the man in the fight, it's the fight in the man. And this man has a lot of fight in him. And I'm talking about J.C. Ice. As that time, coming off the top rope, he may have clipped the referee. And down goes Robert Briscoe, and Tyra, uh, uh, Mr. Golden and uh, Mr. J.C. Ice are both the worst for wear. What is that? Golden just went after the referee. I don't know what you're talking about. I was watching the monitor here, watching to see if J.C. can recover and give Golden a good match. Like I've been saying, I want, I want good matches for this new champion who wears all the gold, just like tonight in Nashville. Golden caught in the backslide by J.C. Ice. He's down on the canvas. That's one. Two, three, he should have been counted out, but the referee is down. Well, and the princess is up, and she's trying to get Golden up and encourage him. Now look, here goes Ice after her again, just oh, like last powder. week. powder. She threw powder into the face of J.C. Ice. Now he's wrapped up by Golden. Golden has got J.C. Ice down after being powdered. Hold on, a count of two. The referee only got to two on Now what is count. going on right here? What is this? Golden going to the floor. The and referee is up. Even as ignorant as these fans are, you see they're pointing to Golden that he's the champion and he's the winner of this match no, too. No, they're pointing at him to the fact that there was powder thrown in the face of J.C. Ice. Did he get the three count? I only saw him go down with the count of two. Well, I now think the referee calling for the bell and awarding the match to J.C. Ice. Oh, that's a BS. That's a joke, Michael. That's a, that's a joke. Bert, do we have any word on the status of Wolfie D and that injury he suffered earlier on today's show? It looks bad to me. I got to believe that his wrist is broken. I really do. I, I'm not for sure, but we are encouraging him to go to the Southern Hills Hospital. It's close here to the fairgrounds and have this thing checked out. It looks to me to be very badly broken. And I don't know what's going on with Flash Flanick in, in his maniacal ways, but it seems every, every week he tries to break a, a leg or a, a wrist. And you got one tough kid here in Wolfie D, but we're trying to get him to the hospital right now. I, I hope it's not broken, but he insists he'll be for the I Quit match Bert, tonight. Bert, here he well, goes. The, okay. Bert, we have Wolfie D with us, and he has uh, got that wrist iced up, and uh, I think you should have an x ray on that, son. Yeah, and that's what everybody's been telling me is, Wolfie, please go to the doctor. Well, see, the reason that I don't want to go to the doctor because I know what the doctor's going to say because I know my body. He's going to say, Wolfie D, your arm's broken. 
or it's either really bad spraying because I know because I've been in this business for a while and I know what hurts and I know what don't hurt and I know when it's time to go to the doctor and I know when it's time not to. And as far as I'm concerned, Flash Flanagan, I'm not quitting and I'm not going to the doctor. And that's why this Saturday we got an I quit match. And like you see right now, I'm not going to quit. And this Saturday, I'm not going to quit no matter what. You're going to have to rip this arm off of me and beat me with it, Flash Flanagan. And I still won't quit. And I know what kind of cowards you are. I know that it won't be much to make you quit. I could probably beat you with one arm tied behind my back, broken on a splint, in a cast. It don't matter. Flash Flanagan, this Saturday, me and you, I quit match. And I ain't quitting nothing, Flash Flanagan, until you say, Wolfie D, I'm quitting. And you say, Uncle, because it's time for me to put you out of this business forever. You've hung me. You've hung me from the balcony. You've done everything to me that you can do to put me out. And you're not going to do it, Flash Flanagan. Give up, because I'm not. Bert, I think we have our answer. Have you ever seen anything like that? I mean, it's unbelievable. The fans know we filmed this on Thursday nights here in Nashville. So legitimately, he has about, about 48 hours to get this look back. But I've got to get him to the hospital. And if he says he's going to be in the match tonight, well, D is you know, if he says he's going to be there, he'll be there. That's one courageous young if man. If he has a cast on his hand tonight, I'd hate to be Flash Flanagan. Oh, my goodness. There'll be, uh, there'll be some payback for sure.